today's video is contributing to everything I want to share. If I told my younger self when I apply for a postdoc, how do you best prepare yourself? Welcome back to PhD Coffee Time. This is the online community for you as PhD student to get motivation, peer support, and practical tips during your PhD. Let me first go back to ground zero on the topic of what is a postdoc? And I'm assuming you are in your PhD in the early phases of research and you have heard about postdoc, you may have met these mysterious people in the lab that is not a professor but doing their own independent research and they are probably the Yoda of your research. In my opinion, postdocs are the really cool people in the university and they deserve more credit. PhD is a training for you to qualify as an independent scientist. By the moment you walk down the aisle and graduate with your gown as a PhD, you are actually admitted as a scholar scientifically and now you are eligible to come up with your own research idea, you are eligible to run your independent study. That's the definition of a PhD. So what is a postdoc? After you have proven yourself as a PhD and you graduated as a researcher, it's a step to diversify your scientific expertise. For example, if you have a research topic A in your PhD, you are benefiting from postdoc training when you go to a lab that is A prime or A B and then you diversify a little bit from your own specialty. Why do you want to do that? That's because for a faculty job, you are supposed to be researching something independent from your primary advisor back in your PhD. You are supposed to start something quite innovative, writing your own grant, starting your own lab. Without a postdoc training, it would be really hard for you to start something completely new. As a matter of fact, most of the life science research require a PhD and postdoc experience before you actually become a professor. Postdoc is a full-time job comes with health insurance, retirement fund, like most of your regular position. If you want to know how much is postdoc paid, you actually could consult the NIH guideline. That was actually how I negotiated a higher salary when I started my postdoc in France. Because postdoc with different level of experience by years are supposed to be paid differently. And you should know your own level, try to negotiate your best benefit. Negotiating for yourself is not a selfish act. It's just a matter of gaining expectation from ground zero so that your employer knows you are happy at work and you'll be at your 100% productivity every day. It's only fair when you're speaking up when you don't feel comfortable about the job. Now back to postdoc. One may argue we are not paid enough, which I think is true. I think postdoc should be seen as an internship to becoming a professor. Now we all know the statistics, maybe 20 or 10% success rate of every graduate PhD will eventually become a professor. So it's really depending on how well you are doing by the time you graduate your PhD. How many papers have you already published? If you have published zero paper, my suggestion is go find a job and don't bother postdoc. Tough story, but it is a competitive market out there. But I hope you will look into the opportunity of postdoc as if it is a funded internship for you to becoming a professor. And you are taking a risk there because you may not become a professor and you want to make every day of your postdoc counted towards other alternative as well. So I always suggest using 10% of your time trying to be a better worker in almost any place in industry or academia. I have spent a lot of time researching how to be a better communicator, how how to research better, how to mentor students better. It becomes a valuable asset for my current role. For most people, thinking about applying to more than one place is already overwhelming. If you can systematically put this on a spreadsheet, you have a lot higher chance in succeeding one of the 20 applications or one of the 200 applications you sent out. For example, if you have three scholarships you're applying to, keep an Excel spreadsheet with rows of application by country, by institution, what are the required document package you needed, when you have drafted an email, when you have sent them, when you have collected an acknowledgement of receipts, and whether you need to write a follow-up. And you can have a status by conditional form 
formatting on Excel saying approved, rejected, pending. Then you can imagine you can fill this Excel table by having more than three applications, right? Last but not the least, I'd like to remind you that we expire as postdoc by five to six year after graduation. That means most of these postdoc scholarship are only awarding people who are just recently graduated PhD. That was actually one of the bottleneck I have faced personally. In fact, I would love to be a full-time lifelong postdoc, but there's no such a thing. And I don't see myself being a professor. It's just a personality thing. I like assisting people in the lab. People say, if you are postdoc, you don't want to be a technician, but I don't want to be a professor either. So now I've chosen a new role to be assisting scientific writing and medical report writing as a medical writer. And I'm loving every day of my work. Anyway, I hope now you are aware of all the opportunity as well as your limitation of applying postdoc. And I hope this video is keeping you organized and informed on your career development as a scientist. Thank you for watching and I'll see you the next time. I want to know how to choose a postdoc PI and where to choose and what should we consider before choosing.